let's take a look at a more challenging uh, inverse function question that relates to rational functions. Okay, so they're telling you that this rational function, as long as eight does or x does not equal eight, is one to one. Okay, let's find the inverse. And the process for finding the inverse, uh, let's fast forward. If you're watching this first, you're going to want to go back and watch some of the more simpler ones because this one's a little, a little hairy. Uh, but this becomes, we replace f of x with y, and then we replace or we switch the x and the y's to look like so. Okay. Oops, that should be a y. And then... I've got to solve this equation for y. Now, anytime you're solving a rational equation, right, something that looks like this, we want to address the y that's in the numerator, right? We have a y that's also in the denominator, which is a problem, okay? And anytime you have an equation that looks like this, I mean, anything, like if this said 3 equals 2 over x, we can get rid of the variable that's in the bottom by multiplying both sides by that variable, right? So then we'd have 3x equals 2 because these would cancel. We take that same approach here if we multiply by y minus 8, okay? Now our job is to get y by itself on one side of the equation, right? We want a statement, you know, when we're doing the inverse function, we want a statement at the end that says y equals because that means we would have undone everything that's here. Um, so we're not necessarily, we're kind of going backwards in order to go forwards here because we're separating the y's into two sides of the equation. Multiplying here, these are going to cancel, right? So we have 2y plus 3 equals, and this is y minus 8 times x. So we have y's on two sides of the equation. So like I said, backwards to go forwards here. But what we can do from here is, and again, there's a, a few different approaches. But if I take this x and I actually distribute it into here, I get yx, I know, I know, minus 8x equals 2y plus 3. Now I've got no more fraction. That's a victory. Okay. And what do we say? We want to get y by itself. So if we want to get y by itself, let's put the y terms together on one side, right? So let's move this 2y over here. And at the same time, let's take this 8 minus 8x and move it over. So I'm going to add 8x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides at the same time. So this becomes yx. I'm subtracting this from here, so I'm going to subtract it from here. And I'm adding the 8x on the left and the right. So I end up with 3 plus 8x like so. So now my statement looks like this. And I have y on one side, right? but I have two y terms. I need a statement, keep in mind what we're going for here, I need a statement at the end that says y equals. Well, there's two y terms here. So how do I write y once if I have two terms that both have a y? I can factor that y out, okay? So now it's y times x minus 2 is equal to 3, oops, that's an 8, plus 8x. And how do I get y by itself? Well, this is y times a quantity, right? And this quantity is a binomial. It's not, you know, it's, it, it'd be nice if it was just a number, but it's not. But that doesn't matter because all I'm trying to do is get this to say y equals, which to solve for y, I need to divide by what I'm multiplying it by, right? The inverse operation here is division. So I'm going to divide by x minus 2, and if I divide by x minus 2, it's just it's the same as if I had an equation that said x3 equals 7, right, or 3x equals 7. What would I do? I'd divide by 3 because it's being multiplied times what I'm solving for. Well, this binomial is being multiplied by what I'm solving for. So I divide it uh, to get rid of it on both sides. And I end up with this statement. So here is our inverse function. I'm going to write, oops, sorry. Ah, I screwed that up. Give me a sec. The last thing that I like to do when I'm finding inverses is actually write this as the inverse function of f. And then I'm going to write my x terms first. So I'm switching the 3 and the 8x, which is fine. And then I have x minus 2. Now, we also have to say here that x cannot equal 2 
for the inverse, right? Because we can't let that denominator be zero. So again, it's a matter of trying to get y by itself and having to go backwards before we go forwards, clearing the fraction by multiplying on both sides, distributing, and then factoring out the y, and then dividing by that term that's next to it, okay? Hope that makes sense for you.